All right, welcome back to watching Business Morning here on Channel Salvage and energy cost has been a major, major driver of inflation, not just in Nigeria, all over the world, especially in Europe, you know, with uh, the disconnect or total plan disconnect, plan total disconnect from Russia uh, since the uh, region has been depending a whole lot on Russia, you know, for source of power, for gas, for oil, fossil fuel, and all of that. Now, um, energy, the price of energy has been making the news a whole lot globally. And stairs got really interested in this. We see that uh, they've been tracking energy costs and they found that feeling, for instance, the tank of a Toyota Corolla uh, has gone up about 80%. Uh, compared to March 20, 2019, from about 13,215 naira. And then when you go to Jigawa, for instance, they pay about 139% for energy more than Lagos residents for every kilogram of cooking gas. So let's know more about what Stairs has discovered with Noel Okedi. She's the energy insight lead with Stairs. Hi, Noel. Good to see you. Hello, good morning, good to see you too. Yeah, <laughs> even though the conversation is not a very good one, when we hear we have to pay more for energy costs and we're looking for how to taper inflation, tell us some of your findings at stairs. Yes, thank you. So, um, like you said, uh, like you mentioned, uh, energy prices are going up. So, over, so since last year in February, when um, Russia invaded Ukraine, you see that prices of diesel increased by over 160% from February to date. Um, for kerosene as well, prices increased by almost 160%. Um, for petrol, which is regulated by the government, we haven't seen that much of a spike. But compared to last year, prices have increased by almost 50%, about 46%. And the same for cooking gas. And these are the um, trends that we've been seeing with prices, so even month on month, we're seeing some states um, paying up to 8,600 Naira for kerosene. For diesel, prices are almost 900 Naira. Um, for states like Bauchi, they're paying up to over 900 Naira, 910 Naira per litre for diesel. And we're just seeing all these um, spikes over the past year that have, like the spikes over the past year have even been higher than in the past five years from what we've been tracking. And this is just as a result of issues like the Russia-Ukraine war, um, the depreciation of the Naira against the dollar, and also supply chain issues globally. Mm. So um, we did see a story earlier this week saying that diesel, the price of diesel has reduced uh, from the beginning of the year, it was about 800, now it's about 640. So this should at least bring a little bit of calm to that energy space. Um, yes, but the thing is, we can't, so we expect that prices will keep rising. And that's because um, prices of oil, so um, earlier you mentioned that oil prices had reduced a bit, but um, going into H2, we're expecting to see higher oil prices as China rebounds, um, demand and also from from the supply side we're seeing OPEC cuts and Russia Ukraine is still going on so all these issues mean that um, oil prices will continue to rise by H2 this year even though they are kind of um, tapering down because of recession fears and this and obviously these these commodities the price of oil affects the price of um, diesel um, petrol and kerosene so that's why we're expecting um, higher prices going yeah. forward obviously fits into transport and food and all of that. And then looking at Nigeria scenario where we're getting to um, a point where subsidy regime is supposed to end. I mean, it kind of looks scary because even with subsidy, we see the increase in energy costs and now subsidy going off, then that's, that's another, another fear. Yes, exactly. So um, when the subsidy is removed, the government is saying that the subsidy will be removed by June, by the second half of the year. We're expecting to see prices going up to 500 naira or even more per liter of petrol. For now, um, the official pump price is around 200 or 195 naira. Um, and so this has huge implications for Nigerians, of course, with inflation. Um, right now, inflation is at 22% for March. So when the subsidy is removed, we're going to see higher prices for transportation, 
And this isn't just transportation of people, but also for food, because most of our food comes from the north and they are transported to um, around the country using vehicles that um, are powered by petrol or diesel. And so all so the subsidy removal means that Nigerians have to brace up for higher prices when the subsidy is removed um, by June. And there's no hedge anywhere. It doesn't look like there's anywhere to hide. <laughs> No, so um, I guess that would depend on how the government removes the subsidy. So if it's an abrupt removal, then there will be no place to hide. But if it's a gradual removal, then there might be some um, support. Or even if, or for example, if the government um, provides some like benefits, like cash transfers, um, like they, they, I think they've said that they're doing, um, they've gotten a loan from the World Bank to um, give people cash transfers, the poorest in society, and things like that will help to cushion the impact. But I think ultimately Nigerians are still going to feel it. Hmm. So you don't think that uh, the $800 million that the federal government borrowed and their plan to you know, distribute to uh, low-income homes and all of that, you don't think that will have a lot of impact? Well, when you think about that $800 million for um, considering that 833 million Nigerians are multidimensionally poor, according to data from the NBS, $800 million isn't going to scratch the surface of reaching um, the most vulnerable in society or in Nigeria. And for that reason, we're just saying that the government is going to need to generate, to, to raise a lot more money to be able to push in the impact for a lot more people. I think the 800 million is just for 50 million Nigerians, not for, it's, it's not going to get around to everybody that needs it. And that's the major problem with the 800 million Naira loan, 800 million dollars loan that we're seeing. Yeah, and that's why I think a lot of people are saying, instead of giving people money, why don't you have a system that is more sustainable? Because I mean, if you give them money today, they spend it. They come for more. Where are we going to get it? And we're still already highly indebted as a country. <laughs> you know, making everybody a debtor, even Nigerian a debtor. Exactly. I think the solution here is more long term, looking at the savings from the subsidy, um, how the government can provide better employment opportunities, better infrastructure, better health care, and so that just to improve the lives of Nigerians. Hmm. Um, I think that's what will really have an impact to, to really make a difference for people. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Noel Okredi, Energy Insights Lead with Stairs. Thank you.